All right, and um, welcome to this lab. So in this lab, uh, we will use AWS AR services to identify uh, Twitter topics and also sentiments. Uh, so we have already packed a few tweets in the in our um, previous labs. Um, so if you go to the collections that contain tweets, and depends on how many tweets you have. Um, so here we have the tweet text, and those are the content of the tweets, and we are going to perform uh, sentimental analysis. Say that are those tweets uh, positive or negative, and also we will also uh, perform a uh, topic modeling. And to see that what other different topics those tweets are talking about. Uh, so first, we need to export the tweets. So before we export, uh, you can do some queries to find out the specific tweets that you are interested. For example, if the tweets contain any specific keywords or hashtags, etc. And also make sure that you have about one thousand tweets. Uh, so that will be. Uh, exported processed. So uh, we should have around 1,000 tweets, but if you, for example, if you have tens of thousand tweets and processing, all those tweets will be expensive by using AI uh, services on AWS. So let's just make sure that we have about 1,000 tweets. So we can see 1,000 in this limit. And now we have 1,000 tweets. And now let's export that tweets, those tweets. So we go to collection and export collection. And now you can see we have these limitations. And next, let's select the fields. And we don't need all the fields. The only field that we need is the text. Uh, so if you find out that text, and then we select the output, uh, we want to use a CSV format. And let's select where do we want to export the data. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to export to my downloads folder and it will uh, export the tweets as a CSV file. So I select and then I export. Okay, so now uh, it has been exported. So I see that I want to show the tweets. So it is in my downloads folder uh, in the CSV file. And now let's open it. Uh, so we can open it with Excel file or with Excel, and so all the tweets are in the first uh, column. So here you can see we have uh, about one thousand tweets, and let's delete the first row because that's it's not a tweet. So let's do delete that one, and if you double click, and uh, you can read the entire tweets. Okay, and it looks like for example this one. Yeah, so you can see for this tweet, um, it actually has three lines. Okay, so the tweet actually has three lines. So this actually will be a an issue that in our sentiment analysis because we need to export those tweets into a text file, and when we exported those tweets into text files. Uh, for example, in this case, this single tweet will become three lines in our text file, and that will be three separate document. So this will be a limitation of our of our analysis, because in that case, actually, instead of analyzing this entire tweet, we are analyzing those three separate uh, three separate lines. So we consider those as three separate lines. So that an accuracy will be lower. Uh, so that if you want to analyze the entire tweet as a single line, and you can use Python to export those as separate text files. So that will require additional programming. So uh, to keep our lab simple, so let's just use what we have right now. So and I just want you to keep in mind that uh, so the result may not be accurate because for the tweets that have multiple lines and they will be considered multiple documents all right so now let's export that tweet into text file so let's see save as and for this format we're going to use text uh, tab delimited and we save it and now in my uh, downloads folder 
And you can see I have another text file. So if I open it, okay. And you can see here, um, those are tweets that export in text file. And also remember that if the tweets that uh, contain multiple lines, and those those tweets will be considered multiple separate documents. Okay, uh, so that will be a limitation in our analysis. All right. Uh, next, so once we have exported our data, so uh, we need to go to AWS. So let's start, uh, go to AWS Academy and let's start our uh, learner lab. And then we go to AWS console. And so first we need to use S3 uh, to upload our data to AWS. So if I search S3, and if you remember that S3 is a data lake solution on AWS, and, um, and also data lake is great for machine learning and also AI tools to analyze the data. So let's create a bucket. And the bucket name has to be unique globally. So I will say I uh, 2022 fall and tweets. And here I will use my last name. So that we are all using a unique bucket name and let's create this bucket so we will just make sure that the bucket is unique and if that is unique and now we have a bucket being created so bucket is like folders that on aws s3 to organize our data and then we open that bucket and then we upload the data that the text file contain the tweets let's say add file and here I go to my downloads folder. Remember, we are uploading that tweet text file, not the CSV file. And we hit upload. And now that tweet has been uploaded to our S3 bucket. All right. And next, we are going to perform the sentiment analysis and also property modeling analysis. So let's search uh, comprehend COM. And so that Amazon Comprehend is opened in the new window. So Amazon Comprehend is the one that is a natural language processing service, which can, can perform sentiment analysis, property modeling, and also other natural language process. So let's here, let's say we want to start an analysis job. So we click that job. And let's say we want to create a job. And for the first one, let's point a tweet sentiment. And here you can choose the types so you can identify uh, the entities and events. You can do a sentiment analysis, top modeling, identify PRN, etc. So let's say we want to do a sentiment analysis. And we we'll choose English because most of our tweets are written in English. And now let's choose where the tweet is located. So let's browse our S3. And let's see. Okay, so that is a text file that contains the tweets. And if to format, uh, so here we see that one document per line. So each single line will be considered a document. Um, and again, this is weird that our accuracy may not be very high because uh, one single tweet may have may, uh, may contain multiple lines, and each single line will be considered one single document. And now, where do you want to save the output? And we can use our S3 bucket to, to store the output. And here, we have been using an existing IM role. So let's use the lab role that uh, we already have. And now, let's go ahead and also create that job. So now you can see this job has been submitted. And it will take like let's say uh, five to ten minutes to finish. Uh, so while well, we are waiting for this job, and let's go ahead and let's create our second job that is Twitter property modeling. So tweet topics. And again, we choose the top modeling. And so basically the same step. So where is your data? So let's choose uh, the text file. And input format, let's say one document per line. And how many topics? Let's say we want 10 topics. And where do you want to save their result? 
At the end, we choose our S3 bar key. And we're using the same IM row and let's hit create. All right, so now you can see the sentiment analysis is in progress and top modeling just submitted. Uh, so you can pause the video here because it may take about 10 to 30 minutes for both analysis to be complete. So let's pause the video here. Okay, and while we are waiting, uh, so if you are using your own computer and uh, later you may need to use a software to extract the result from those two uh, analyses. So uh, I would recommend that you can now download and install 7-Zip to your own computer. Uh, so it support uh, Windows. Uh, it also support, um, I think, uh, for Mac computer. Um, so you can, if you don't have 7-Zip, uh, I would highly recommend you download and also install 7-Zip now because uh, we will use this later uh, to extract the file that uh, uh, contain our analysis results. All right, and so now uh, you can see that my sentiment analysis is complete and you can see it take about uh, six minutes uh, because sentiment analysis relatively is faster and then the top modeling. Uh, so once it is completed, uh, let's click that analysis and you can see this is where the result has been saved. So let's open that one. And now you can see the result is saved as a GZ file, which is a, a zip file. So let's download that data. Again, remember that for this is for our sentiment analysis. Um, so here you can see this file has been um, downloaded to our local computer. And if you have tool that can open it, go ahead and open that one. Uh, however, I would recommend using 7-zip. So if I right-click, show up more options, and you can see 7-zip is one of the tools that can extract a file from the TARGZ file. So let's extract that one. Now we have this folder. We open it, and we need to extract the TAR one more time. So right-click, more option, 7-zip, and extract. All right, uh, so now we have this output. So that is the analysis, the result for our sentiment analysis. So that for each single document, is that positive, negative, neutral, or mixed feeling. Uh, so to view the data, let's go open our uh, MongoDB campus. Uh, let's say in our database, uh, let's create a new collection to store the sentiment analysis result. So create a new collection and let's call it uh, sentimental analysis. And create that connection. And we select that connection uh, sentiment. Okay, sorry for the typo. And we can also import the data. So let's import data. We select the file, which is in my downloads folder. And that output, we open it. And you can see they recognize that's a JSON file and we click import. So now we know that for the first line, line zero, the sentiment is neutral. And if you look at scores, you can see the score for the neutral is the highest. And for the line six, which is a document in the, in the seventh line, uh, it is positive. And if you look at the scores, and we can see that the score for positive is highest. Okay, uh, so now we have our result for the sentimental analysis. Okay, so once we have that sentimental analysis and also upload it to our MongoDB database, so let's go ahead and go to MongoDB and let's browse the connection where you can see now the sentimental analysis result is in our MongoDB dataset. Uh, so let's go ahead and also create a visualization so that we can understand the result. Uh, so let's open the charts. Uh, of course, you can add those charts into your existing dashboard of your previous lab. <coughs> or you can just create a new dashboard uh, for this lab. So for example, for this one, we call it uh, sentiment 
and popping modeling. And now let's see, we want to add a chart for the sentiment analysis. And we bring our uh, cluster and find out uh, database where it contains the sentiment analysis. So let's open. And uh, after the sampling, so let's, for this one, let's create a heat map. So here, let's go ahead and also create a heat map. And uh, for that intensity, um, let's see that uh, uh, let's see that for the y-axis we bring uh, the lines, okay. And for the x-axis for the category, let's bring the sentiment. And for the intensity, let's also bring the sentiment, and we choose count as the aggregation. Okay, and now we can see that uh, we have most of the tweets that are neutral, okay? And we have a few tweets that are negative, and then we have tweets that are positive and also mixed. So if you want to see the result for each individual line, you can uncheck the bin, where you can see the most of the tweets, they are neutral and also a few negative tweets, and also positive and also mixed tweets. Uh, if you want to summarize the tweets, I say I want to see the tweets by every 100 lines. And of course, which you can do. And you can see here for the tweets that within the 600 and also 700, where we have a lot of negative tweets. Okay. And then you can go back to your tweets to see that the tweets that in the line 700 and 600, between 600 and 700. And are they really negative? And, uh, and also, uh, you can see that most of tweets are actually very positive. So let's call this one uh, sentiment analysis. And let's save the chart. And of course, you can just adjust the size of that chart. OK, again, if you want to see the aggregated result, see the result per every 100 lines and you can use that one uh, if you want to just see the individual results which may not be very easy to see the details and you can just uncheck the aggregation uncheck the bin and you can see the result for each individual tweets all right uh, so now the topic modeling has uh, completed and you can see it take like about 30 minutes uh, so we just go ahead and download the result uh, again the result is saved into this uh, uh, zipped file so let's download the data and we go to our downloads folder so this is uh, the file that contains the result of the top modeling and we right click and we're using 7-zip to extract the files and we open it again and we use a uh, 7-zip extract it one more time and for the topic modeling so we have two files that have been created one contains the topics so that each document belong to each topic another one contains the terms so that what are the keywords that uh, each topic uh, so as we did earlier so let's go back to our database uh, so this time let's create two uh, collection one is called topics and another one, let's call it terms. So those are the keywords. And for the topics, so let's import data. Uh, so here, make sure that you uh, use the right, um, import the right files. So here you can see that um, for each topic, uh, for each uh, document, which topic they belong to. So one document may belong to multiple topics, so which uh, is normal. So let's import that one. And that's done. And let's go to terms and let's import data. And those are like the keywords that in each topic and the weight indicate that how important they are in each topic. Uh, so let's import that one. And that's done. Okay. Uh, so now we are going to our uh, 
MongoDB chart, and we're going to add uh, two more charts to show the result of the topic modeling. So let's add a chart, and uh, we choose our cluster, and also we choose our database. Uh, so first, uh, let's create a bar chart to show the topics. So let's click the topics, and here, uh, uh, let's say we want to put uh, the topic uh, into application, and we also want to put the topic as series. Okay, uh, so now you can see I have those number of the topics. Okay. And uh, for some reason that I only have uh, five topics being created, um, uh, where you can see that in the first topic, I have uh, almost 300 documents. And in my third topic, I have six, more than 600 documents. Okay, uh, so let's call it topics. And let's save and close. Uh, so the result might be different. So in your case, you may have 10 topics uh, created and you may have different number of the um, uh, topic that created um, than in my case. So now let's show what are the keywords in each topic. So uh, in, this in this case, uh, we will use the terms. And here let's use uh, word cloud. And so terms will be the text. And here we want to convert the weight into number. And the weight will be the size and let's use average. And for the color, let's use topics. Okay, and now you can see that for different topics, so what are the keywords? And let's call it keywords and we can save and close okay and now actually you can compare uh, those two charts and for example that you can see for the first topic we have this number of tweets and you can see they are talking about conservative house parties uh, for the second um, topic we have about 500 tweets and you can see that actually is talking about weight, boat, uh, etc. And we have a lot of tweets that in this topic, uh, where they are talking about, uh, I'm not sure the, uh, maybe those are the tweet users, uh, all the URLs. So they are, look like they are uh, retweeting this URL. And we have the third, uh, the fourth topic, uh, talking about March election, and we have the last topic. Okay, so that's pretty much for this slide. Uh, so finally, let's make sure that we share this dashboard to be public. Uh, we also want to give authentic access to all the data. Okay, and now, yes, we give authentic, we save that. And now you can copy this URL, and that is the URL that you need to submit on Canvas. So before you submit, I would always check that one in private mode. And if I can build those results in a private mode, and then we are good.